This video is being brought to you by Satisfy Gaming. Make playing your Switch in portable mode super ergonomic with the Satisfy Gaming Grips. They also have case and grip bundles that let you keep the grip on your Switch and store it safely in their high quality cases. These grips make using your Switch in portable mode as comfortable as a pro controller. Use the code REVIEWTECH10 to save 10% off your entire order. Link below in the description. Skip it up and that up. What's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rich of Review Tech USA, and I have on someone who has been pretty on point with things that he has known about when it came to whether it be the, we it's all but guaranteed it's coming, the Switch Pro, we'll call it now. I'm sure the name will change, like they had the Switch Mini before, and it ended up being the Switch Lite. Right. And I get a lot of my information about the switch from super metal dave so instead of you know going by some of the information he has posted on his twitter feed or so on and so forth i was like let me have him on the show we could talk about things there's certain things we can't talk about so if you're wondering like i'm sure some people are going to know some stuff that we know but we can't say we just we can't it's just nintendo and they'll send ninjas and i don't want to deal with ninjas and neither does dave um <laughs> I'll also have a link to Dave's YouTube channel below in the description. Um, he does very thorough videos, uh, and he does has does awesome work, and that's why I have him on here. So I'd rather Thanks. hear it from the horse's mouth instead of me, you know, when he could give even more information than I can about the su upcoming Switch Pro or whatever Nintendo's going to call it, Nintendo's or the Switch Deluxe XL or whatever they'll call it. The so, new Switch, hopefully not. Please, Switch yeah. U. Switch U. Yeah. Oh, please no. <laughs> No you no use no wheeze no nothing. So hey, maybe it's Switch Ultra with the U. Hey, <laughs> that would still be better well, than the, the the Wii U, where people thought it was an add-on, and even after it was already dead. Oh, what happened right. to the add-on for the Wii? That screen. I people always said that to me, man. People yeah, exactly. Always said that to me. So I'm gonna let Dave go off on a little tangent here, give you guys some insider information, and I'm gonna ask some questions along the way. And it should be interesting because I will let you know right now, there is definitely a more powerful Switch console coming from Nintendo. And it's basically guaranteed at this point. So, Dave, you have the yeah. table now. Yeah, definitely. And and basically, I want to make clear, first of all, this is not necessarily insider information that I'm sharing. It's public information that has been gathered in depth for the past year starting back in July 2018. Um, I, before the Wall Street Journal even reported in October 2018 that a new switch was coming, uh, I discovered that they were hiring for, uh, in July 2018, I did a video that Nintendo was hiring, working on new hide, uh, hardware and uh, working on a new operating system uh, development on drivers, network stack development, including work on a brand new SOC system on chip and uh, to implement testing on Windows, Linux, and um, basically to provide feedback on the system performance and usability. Back in July 2018, I was like, wow, this is a new console. <clears throat> and sure enough, right after that, we got a rumor that started developing that a new Switch was coming in 2019, as, as soon as 2019. And then uh, we had that discussion, Rich, you and, my, uh, you and me back in August of that year. Uh, the rumor was a, you know, a new Switch that could could have up to 4K upscaling, 8 gigabytes of RAM, new SOC, uh, AAA third-party exclusives like Resident Evil 2 Remake, for example. And then um, we started discussing that, and then in September I did another video. I discovered more information. They were working on a, uh, a console that had multi-threading, and the Tegra X1 does not support multi-threading. It's, it's, uh, it's a symmetrical uh, processor that does four cores at a time. So... Uh, PCIe Express support, spatial 3D audio, <clears throat> and then the Wall Street Journal came out uh, and reported the next month that Nintendo was in fact working on a new Switch for a release in 2019. And I have their information here. It says uh, about, interestingly enough, about what they said about the display. Okay, so we'll get into that. This is back in October 2018. They said one option. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Is is improving the display. They said. Their current switch uses a lower end LCD display, and um, but some of the uh, from more of the more of the standard smartphone LCDs, updating the display with these technologies would make it brighter, thinner, and more energy efficient. The updated switch isn't expected to adopt uh, OLED panels. So the interesting thing about that is we heard reports up until uh, March 28, 2019, that uh, Nintendo is going to release a new, more powerful switch that was going to have, uh, for the more avid gamer, 
and uh, increased features, updated, what have you. And then, of course, a less expensive model that was going to focus, focus on portability. So we got that. And some confusion came out from that because of this revision that they had. And uh, in that March 2019 report, though, they also said that Nintendo was going to be working with Sharp to provide their panels. Sharp refused to comment at that time. So then it was discovered, the Switch Lite, the whole thing, the whole leaks with that and everything, and then, um, and then this revision was discovered as well, which was not officially announced by Nintendo. No, There's no Twitter announcement, nothing, that revision. So <laughs> the Switch Lite and the uh, Switch revision uh, was announced or basically was discovered. And then the Wall Street Journal announced in August 2019 that, the, that Nintendo was going to be working with Sharp to provide their EXO displays, their high-end premium displays. Then a bunch of websites like VentureBeat, uh, ARS, Technica reported that this was going to be most likely used for the Switch Lite and Switch revision. And I did a video at that time right after that. I said, no, 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 there's no way they're going to be using that expensive screen for the Switch Lite and Switch Revision it because no it's really expensive. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. But uh, videos on YouTube went with that from those websites um, because they're credible websites. They're respected. I respect those websites. But, you know, we all make mistakes sometimes and not re researching what those – type of things are sometimes because a lot of people didn't know what this sharp exo display was they heard energy efficient but they didn't necessarily realize how that was used for premium displays ultra hd uh power saving and not just power saving but, uh, no bezels basically that stuff like that so spawn wave as you know he's a great youtuber uh he did a tear down on both switch light and the switch revision and just uh, two weeks ago actually was finally confirmed that neither of the Switch Lite or Revision have that sharp EXO display. So what does that mean? We're going all the way back to 2018 with the Wall Street Journal. They were hinting at this was happening already. So the system has basically been in the works, this new more powerful Switch, for a while now. So they're getting ready to announce it. And the really cool thing about this whole thing is that people are, that aren't catching on to this is that they announced with the, with the Wall Street Journal that they were going to be using these Sharp Exo displays in 20, starting in 2019 as far as providing them to Nintendo, okay? So that means that this system is probably starting in production or already in production manufacturing, or yeah. manufacturing in 2019 to be released most likely by the end of the fiscal year 2020. And the reason why I say that is because that report from the Wall Street Journal came out, I believe, on August 6th, five days after the... Uh, investors me uh, meeting for Sharp, and their VP was quoted from uh, Muchizuki, the tech journalist from the Wall Street Journal, and he you can't find that quote anywhere but from the Wall Street Journal. So tech journalists they do attend those meetings for uh, you know, companies like Sharp, Nintendo, Sony, PlayStation, Xbox, for their financial briefings for the fiscal year. So logically, you can expect to see a new Switch being on store shelves by the end of March uh, 2020 is, is, is my estimate. And there we go. Yeah, and, and it, it, that's around the same time they released the original Switch was March of 2017, and it's kind of that three-year refresh slash upgrade trend that we see now with the Xbox One X. Granted, I would say that was four years, but with the PS4 Pro, that came out three years after the original PS3 came out, I believe, around yeah. the same time. So that would, that would make sense. So you're also saying, too, that you – there's new chips coming out and you, yep. you kind of deducted from things that you saw publicly again. This is not mm -hmm. insider information that Nintendo might be straying away from NVIDIA. It, it is possible. And the reason for that also is goes back again. Uh, we heard that what well, we didn't talk about in, in the in my review here is that uh, the Japanese publication back in March, Nikkei, reported that there was a next gen switch coming to follow the less expensive model. And there were some various different translations in Japanese, if you recall from that article. And there were some of them reported that there were some OS uh, operating system uh, functionality issues they were having with this new, more powerful switch at the time. You may recall that, you may not recall, but- I do recall that, I remember yeah. you telling me that. Yeah, and, and so then in April of 2019, Nintendo was hiring 
for guess what? OS virtualization software engineers. <laughs> so the so what that means is they were they were hiring an OS Vertio driver specialist. So basically what that is is an operating system emulation, somebody who specializes in emulation of an operating system. So what what system would Nintendo be needing to emulate the operating system for? Well, I mean, obviously for backwards compatibility, but most likely for a new new console, right? Yes. All right. So then we discovered, uh, now we're going to put a disclaimer out there like, like we need to do is that this doesn't, this may not mean anything, but it was discovered that NVIDIA is no longer following Nintendo on social media. Uh, so that it may mean nothing guys, but absolutely nothing. Yeah. But it's still interesting that a company that has a corporate partnership with another one and is providing a, 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 the processor for a the current very, models. A very popular product is no longer following <laughs> one another. On, I mean, it could mean that it, it's just a strange thing to just proactively happen. Like, oh, let's just not follow them, even though we're still working closely with them. Yeah, it, like I said, may mean may mean absolutely nothing, but it it does kind of it kind of makes you think a little bit. And also with the, this OS being emulated on a new piece of hardware. That, that they already, you can't find the job that's anymore. It's been removed. <clears throat> so they already had that done, obviously. They already completed that work or whatever back in April or the last few months. So if they're trying to emulate the Switch Horizon operating system, which is what it's called for developers, it's the Horizon operating system of the Nintendo Switch, uh, obviously they're not going to be using a current Tegra X1 processor, even the, even the uh, X2, the Parker chip, because that is basically the same type of chip uh, you could run, you know, whatever on there, no problem. You wouldn't have to go through all the hassle of uh, trying to emulate an actual entire operating system of another console unless you're doing backwards compatibility. You're trying to make it as good as as good as you can. So with that in mind, with these new technologies being introduced, we just had announced, uh, which is coming out next month, the Surface Pro X, which is a, an amazing uh, tablet basically and it, it runs two teraflops of compute performance and graphics at seven watts okay that's crazy and the nintendo switch runs at about seven watts or so six watts in portable mode and it's far far less less uh, powerful we, uh, we know that since the ship is based in 2015 tegra x1 so Something's going on here, guys. So they're <laughs> putting those things together with this sharp EXO display. You're not going to be releasing a uh, system that doesn't take advantage. That's not Nintendo. Nintendo uses what they invest in. So if you're investing in a sharp EXO display that's capable of UHD and capable of uh, uh, small bezels, real thin, you know, it's very similar to what the technology they're using for these new mobile devices from Samsung, from uh, Microsoft to the Surface Pro X. It's extremely similar. Also, keep in mind, too, before people always get this misconstrued, we're not saying that this more powerful Switch is going to run games in 4K. No. It's not. But we're saying it's going to be more of a a solid 1080p performer, and when you dock it, it's going to upscale games to 4K, and you're going to be able to watch Netflix in 4K and things like that. Because people yep. always, oh, you could tell, you always see in the comments, oh, you could tell they, they're, they're, their information's wrong because they're saying it's going to be able to run <laughs> games. No, it's not going to be. By 2080 Ti, I can't max out games or, you know, if a game's really demanding, like, it'd be better to run it at 1440p. There's no way a Switch is running, even a more powerful Switch is running games in 4K. Yeah, well, what it means is, is that you plug in your you plug in your system to your TV and it says, What's, what kind of TV do you have? Oh, I got a 4K TV. Okay, you got a 4K TV, upscale, that's it. And that's it, yeah. So there's a difference between rendering a game in a resolution and upscaling. Ups, it, so we're not saying it, but we are saying that the new Switch is probably going to have more memory than, if we can talk about that, going to have more memory than we initially thought. Um, yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these new mobile devices are going with 12 gigabytes of the new. I think uh, Samsung just announced their, I believe in July, LPDDR5. Uh, uh, and that is much faster than, of course, LPDDR4, X, and 4. The Nintendo Switch uses LPDDR4 from 2014. If you can look it up yourself, guys, uh, it came out in 2014. It's an ancient RAM 
And a lot of what's been happening with the Switch currently has been RAM memory bandwidth related. 26 gigabytes of bandwidth per second is drastically slower than even the base model PS4, which is, I believe, it's over 170 uh, gigabytes per second of bandwidth is what they have in the PS4. And that's why you, if you know you had Digital Foundry kind of sh- scratching their head, wondering why Wind Waker, um, the remake, or Link, Link's out. Awakening, Link's, right? Link's Awa- Wind Waker. What the hell am I talking? Link's Awakening. Uh, I'm out of it today. I haven't had, had any coffee. Um, where it has these random, like it'll be a solid sixty, then just like moving to another part of the screen loading, the the frame rate will drop to thirty, and. We've been speculating, Dave and I have been speculating that more than likely it's due to me- memory bandwidth limitations that that's happening. So Also, also Game Explained did their own technical uh, breakdown of it. And they also blamed it on memory bandwidth, bo- a bandwidth bottleneck that uh, when the system is trying to load its data, it has to, the, the GPU has to slow down to wait for the memory to load, basically. So uh, memory bandwidth is a huge issue. And that's another reason why a lot of these games are always, I mean, always, downscaling the resolution when you play it in dock mode on the switch because it has it doesn't have the memory bandwidth when the, the the games get a little bit more heavy on the screen with the graphical processing like doom or or what have you they have they actually have to lower the resolution to keep up with it it doesn't have the bandwidth to keep up also on top of that in 2019 you have seen saints row the third perform terribly on the switch and that's an xbox 360 game uh, so you also have a CPU. Uh, a CPU needs to be drastically upgraded as well because uh, you're not seeing that many up, uh, open world games on the Switch either because uh, the CPU simply can't draw the, the worlds for the GPU to, to render because it's just not it's just not fast enough. What the chip's not wasn't designed for those type of games. So you've seen a lot of you still seen a lot of Xbox 360 ports. Assassin's Creed 3 came out in 2019. Saints Row the Third is a 20 uh, coming out this year. Came out in 2011, I believe. Uh, uh, Bullet Storm came out in 2011. Another game came out this year. So you're seeing the trend continue with these old ports on the Switch. Now, in 2020, when these new systems come out, uh, they 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 they're going to have to you know they're going to have to do something there to to get more of these newer ports, not rely on Xbox 360 ports. Yeah, and one of the other things too, the, the limiting factor is not only the speed of the memory inside of the uh, switch it's the amount of memory too because four gigabytes shared between the operating system and the game that's being played is just for these big games is just not enough it's amazing what they're being you know money talks because they're porting over games that should be impossible like the witcher 3 you know yeah but yeah even that game has had to have drastic you know drastically downgraded to run on the switch and that came out in 2015 uh so it also on top of that, these ports are taking developers a little bit longer uh, to get running on the system anyway. So there's a lot of things going on there. And then when you have these mobile these mobile chips that are just like crushing it, like just amazing uh, performance in 2019 even, uh, you could definitely see where this is going for Nintendo. Um, <clears throat> the Switch is not a gimmick, though. It's not like a Wii situation. The, the Switch is a proven winning idea for nintendo like they should keep this idea right so i think they uh they're going to be going like all in you know on this in more enhanced nintendo switch going into the ps5 generation because they have a winning formula here with the switch it's no there's no gimmicks here less risk it's yeah people people love it and but but the common concern has been uh of the processing power it's their flagship console but it's not really able to run the more modern games like Red Dead Redemption 2, Resident Evil 2 Remake, uh, the latest and greatest uh, Tomb Raider game, Call of Duty even, is not on the Switch at all. Not even Call of Duty Mobile is on the Switch. So, uh, and yeah. that game, that game looks pretty good. I mean, I've, it looks very similar to, about, to Black, Op, Black Ops 4. Actually, I've seen, I've seen plays, comparisons. It actually, play, I was just playing on my iPhone. It's actually It actually plays pretty good too. It, it, it's it's interesting what now this mobile technology can do. Um, now, do you think Nintendo is going to keep the same pricing? Like, I know obviously if you know something inside, you can't talk about it. But do you think it's going to be maybe like PS4 Pro territory or? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be at least three ninety nine for something like that. 
something like a premium, you know, like, but I do think they're going to make it something that is like, oh my God, I want that right now. Like I, I need to have that. Like something like like They were going to make it worth your while, basically. That's what Nintendo does. Two ninety nine. people were kind of not people were saying that was kind of expensive at first for the switch because it was a portable, but I mean, you got the dock, you got the joy cons, you got the play on the TV, play on the go. Yeah. I was saying so, that at first yeah. too. Yeah. So for this new switch with modern technology that the, that everyone's actually using now, Samsung just signed a deal back in July with uh, AMD to have their RDNA and Navi technology for their galaxy phones and tablets coming out um, in early 2021. So, oh, wow. That's, yeah. You're going to have like the portable PS4 in your pocket. Yeah. So you're going to have games that are on mobile that don't even run on the current Switch by then. So, yeah, it's going to happen. There's no doubt at all. I, like 100% Nintendo's releasing this new console uh, at, next year at the latest. <laughs> they, they they have to. I mean, it was interesting. I want to go back to what you said. So Nintendo almost the original switch was like a science experiment for them. They're like, okay, let's use kind of off the shelf. We'll get the Tegra X one. It's good enough for now. We'll get, Mm -hmm. you know, these cheap Inalux screens, I think, I believe is what their brand is. Inalux. Yeah. Inalux. I was, yeah, I was right. And basically what they did is, okay, let's see if this works first before we go all in. Obviously it's wildly successful. Now they're like, okay, we know people want these. Now let's put the extra tech in them. So now they can get more of the games that they want onto the system, especially because they're seeing that these third party ports that do come to the switch, which there's a surprising amount of them for its limitations actually do sell well. Yeah. And, and when this new switch does come out and uh, it, it does get these AAA games, it, it's, and there's people that are were you know saying hey the Nintendo would never segregate their market like that but what they have to realize is that the current Switch was, would never get those games either way, so whether you're, you're going to get those games or not doesn't matter on the current Switch because they're not they, they're either going to come or they're not going to come, so you're going to have a new Switch that runs those games or or you don't, so you, Nintendo has to make that decision going into PS5 generation because the current Switch isn't getting games that run on the Xbox One even. The Red Dead Redemption 2, which runs on the base model Xbox One. Barely, but yes. <laughs> barely, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so if it could barely run on that and that's more powerful than the Switch and has more compute performance, you ain't, you're ain't, you not getting Red Dead Redemption 2 on the current Switch. So, Yeah, and, and I can hear people in the comments already like, well, the Switch is doing great and uh, they don't need to upgrade right now, you know, you know, whatever. But that's fine and good and everything, but... You you all you got you should have a console that does a transition into this next generation of consoles to get these games to make yourself money as a company. So, whether or not the Switch is selling good right now is irrelevant. You need to have a uh, a plan to move ahead for the next generation of consoles, including for mobile technology. It's several generations ahead of where the Switch is right now. You don't what you don't want is a Wii situation wherein it had four four really good years 20, 2006 to twenty ten. 2011 to, and 2012 dropped like a rock. Like it just died quickly because everyone was like, you guys need to upgrade your system. Like we're we're ready for a new Wii. <laughs> and Nintendo waited and waited and waited and finally they released a Wii U. It was a, and then it was just basically an Xbox 360 with the screen, with the tablet screen. And it was like, it was good. It was a great upgrade for the time, but then it got completely blown away with the PS4 and like that's... six months later. Yeah. <clears throat> so... We're, it's it's an interesting time because I, I, I think, you know, the Switch was an exper- a successful ex- experiment for Nintendo. And now that they know that people have a genuine interest in this, they're going to come out with that. Maybe this is what they originally intended the Switch to be, but they didn't want to do it yet in case it was a failure. You know, yep. so I, I, I do see a new Switch coming. And I, you know, and and we've even heard rumors that they're going to go beyond the eight gigabytes of RAM too. So it's a, a, lot, a lot of these new phones are, are are using twelve gigabytes of LP DDR five. So it's possible. Anything's possible, really, with mobile tech right now. They can do anything. Literally, you can play any game on there. Just about, <laughs> at least coming up, yeah. uh, they're going to have that capability. So it's really exciting, an exciting time. And um, there's nothing. Again, this is a mobile console, right? Nobody complains about the $1,000 phones that come out every single year 
uh, from I from an iPhone and Galaxy. I've been guilty of this. <laughs> I I like oh why wouldn't it, or why would Sony come out with the PS4 Pro? We just had got the PS4, and I, I was guilty of that. And you know now I'm like yeah, I, I get a new phone every damn year personally because I'm an idiot. But why would I complain <laughs> about getting a Switch three a new Switch more powerful Switch three years later? This is also too in Nintendo's best interest because now that they see that because they get licensing fees for every copy of a game that's sold, and now that they see that third-party developers' games are selling well on a Nintendo platform, which is something that hasn't happened in a very long time, that they're like, wait, we for we need to get more third-party games on the Switch, and if the Switch becomes too weak to get the next-gen third-party games, <laughs> we're not going to get those licenses. We're not going to get that profit from licensing the games being licensed. So they even have, that's another incentive that people don't realize for Nintendo as well. And so. if you get if you get Red Dead Redemption Two running on this new more powerful Switch, I mean Nintendo is going to be all in on that, like totally. You're gonna they, they see dollar signs there. Yeah, and that's what people <laughs> need to realize. They make money off the third party games, just you know, and and first party games. And now that they see the experiment is successful, where these third party games sell well, they have to have a console that's in the same kind of sort of realm of capability with next gen just like the current switch kind of is in sort of the same realm of capability and i've been saying that and all these rumors are kind of leading us down that path to yeah they they, a new switch is coming you know i know it's definitely and it's coming sooner than i think it's not going to be like they're going to do five years like a normal console they can't (laughs) you know the the switch technically was running off the shelf outdated hardware which I guess yep. you could argue every console does, but Nintendo really went off the shelf because they wanted to make sure it was successful first, so they have to have something to compete with Sony and Microsoft because they're still competitors. There's no other way around it. People people t- tend to think, like, oh, Sony, you know, uh, Nintendo's all buddy-buddy with Microsoft, and it's a different product, but at the same time, they still want you to buy their console along with the Scarlet, not just buy the Scarlet and not get a Switch. Well, so. since when has Nintendo ever needed Microsoft for anything? That you know what I mean? Like too. that is true they don't too. they don't need their help. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah. they can make their own transition just fine on their own, guys. I mean, seriously, <laughs> they're doing fine on their own. So we're in a wait and see period. All I can say is that next gen is coming pretty much from all three hardware developers. So yeah. get, your, get your wallets ready because they're going to be smoking. So if you're you're buying all three, just brace yourselves because next year is going to be an expensive year. All right, oh, th- man. Yeah, yeah, get your wallets ready. Get your wallets ready, or get you get you get your credit card, uh, get your payments ready for your credit card. So, all right, Dave, thank you for coming on and sharing all of this awesome information. It's appreciated. I'd, like I said, I'd rather have it come from you than me talking about like tweets and stuff you put out there. It was awesome. Yeah, th- thanks for having me on. I want to make clear to the everyone watching that there's no rumors here. It's all public information, but there has been misinformation along the way in, since 2018. So we definitely want to clarify some of this in this video today. So I'm glad you have me on because you have a wider audience. I got 20,000 subscribers. I can't reach and, and clarify things like, you know, the mainstream media yeah. can report sometimes and misreport. So thank you for having me on. Not a problem. Make sure to check out Super Metal Dave's channel. I'll have a link to it below in the description. And as always, guys, this is Rich Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. Thank you.